Finally, in this last video, let's look at some best practices for some of our settings. So if we look up at the top of our form, there's actually quite a few places where you're going to access your settings, but we'll start with the most obvious, and that is our settings cogwheel. In the workshop, we looked at how to create quizzes in Google Forms. That's that third tab over there that says quizzes. This is where you would turn it on to make it a quiz, to turn lock mode on in Chromebooks, to decide when you want to release scores, and what type of responses you want your students to see. The settings we didn't look at in the workshop include some general settings. You can select it to collect email addresses so that students will be um, either required to enter their email address or it will collect their email addresses on the back end. You can restrict it to your domain so that uh, somebody who might get that link outside of your school district can't access it. And this one is pretty important. You can limit it to one response. So if this is a quiz um, and it's less formative, if you don't want your students to take it again, You'll want to click limit to one response so that they can't take it a second time. Or more importantly, if they're voting on something like what movie to watch or where to go on your field trip um, or what your class name should be, you limit it to one response so students can't take it over and over and over again and sort of spam the phone as they will. You can choose to let them edit after they submit it. So if it is more of a formative assessment, you could turn that on and students will have the option to go back after they view their score and fix any answers that they got wrong. And then to see a summary chart um, uh, and text responses from their peers, this would mean after they click submit, they'll see a pie chart with everybody and how they answered. And if they're text-based, they'll see a list of those answers. So occasionally, um, if you want students learning from each other, you might turn that on. Right in the middle, it says presentation. You can show a progress bar so students know how much they've completed. You can shuffle the question order, um, which again might help with some potential wandering eyes. Just make sure your students know if you shuffle the question order that the name question will appear somewhere in the form, not necessarily at the beginning, which is sometimes a little confusing. Then there could be a link to submit another response. So if you haven't limited it to one response, automatically your students will see a link after they submit it that says, would you like to do this again? Um, again, great for formative assessment. Not so great if, uh, if you don't want them doing it over and over. You can also submit uh, a specific response to your students after they're done, like, great job, or now that you've finished, work on this, whatever message you want them to see. After they click submit. So those are the cogwheel settings. There are a couple other settings you might want to know about. Top right are three dots here. Um, will allow you to make a copy of your entire form or just grab a link to it if you wanted to send it to your students in the chat box. The last setting I want to show you is actually a response setting. So over in our response tabs, we did look in the chat box about how to create a new spreadsheet, which we'll look at more in the future too. But those three dots next to it will also allow you to get an email notification for new responses. So if this isn't a quiz that you're having all your students do, maybe it's something um, after the fact, if you're doing an occasional survey for students to submit, you know, suggestions for class, book, um, library return, something like that that's just more occasional, I like to turn this on so I get an email and I know to check the form when I get a new response in. And those are some good Google Form settings to know about.